popping on this video is that uh, it's Norris Jerker. You see on P part 2, looks a little bit jerky. Hopefully this one isn't. Right, so UCLP in my case failed and the power plan which I use weren't successful by increasing the HDL and the LDL to almost equal proportions. So just a quick recap on what cholesterol is. Basically, you have a blood test, you're given a cholesterol reading. Five and under is classed as healthy. Anything above five is classed as being an issue. Uh, the cholesterol is broken down into two subcategories. It's HDL, which is good cholesterol, and LDL, which is bad cholesterol. In my situation, uh, once I've done UCLP, the overall cholesterol is 4.7, which is actually quite good. Okay, it's under five, but the bad cholesterol, LDL, was up to 3.4. 3 is uh, not great. Also, they told me, uh, if you picked it up on UCLP part two, you had 3.4 to 4, you get 4.4. But they said the overall reading was actually 4.7. But hey ho, there we go, either way it's not brilliant. So, what I wanted to do after doing UCLP was to say, right, I want to try a niacin. Now, when you have a cholesterol issue, you go to the doctors, they prescribe what they call a statin drug. Now, this is the one which I use, which is Lipitor or Astrophastatin. Comes like that. Uh, I've had this, most of the family's had this, my dad had this, and it does control statin however what happened is that if we go back to the 80s probably about 1985 this is when cholesterol issues was being identified and over in america they invested millions and millions if not billions of dollars into developing a statin drug i'll just show you now what is needed today is to prescribe this drug so that the research projects can actually recover some of that money and the default is to say use the statin tablets which is prescribed by the doctor. You go down to the chemist, you pay for your prescription. That money is then put back into the research to recover the amount of money actually invested back in the 80s. Well, I always found it very, very interesting is that this came five years after it was thought these things like your butter was bad. And I've already done a video on butter which says it's good, it's a natural product rather than a man made product as natural fat rather than artificial fats that is produced quite quickly. It was also told to reduce red meat, which included, you know, things like bacon. So I will be doing a video in the defense of bacon, which is coming up very shortly. It was also told that eggs are bad for you and some dairy products, but in particular eggs, stay away from. And the final one was kind of introducing things like crisp and dry, which is rapeseed oil. Olive oil came in and was all advised to get rid of the lard. You know, don't cook in lard anymore. That's going to flare your arteries up. That's going to be bad for you. Well, all those four products I have either done or will be doing a video shortly in defense of them really uh, because when those four products was no longer widely used that's when we suddenly started having problems like cholesterol. Coincidence or not I don't believe that it is and we also have different problems like you know winter blues which is being really down in winter uh, and you'll say well it's a lack of vitamin D. But those are other videos. But, uh, so back to what we're doing so with astrophastatin which they will prescribe left right and center because they're trying to recover money back from the product development trying to recover millions and millions of dollars so an interesting story is when statins was produced they've discovered that there's a lot of residue a lot of leftover product and one of the scientists decided to have a look at that product in more detail and to see if it would have a similar effect of the statin would it actually help with cholesterol issues and the answer was yes uh, but the problem was is that this type of medication if it was used would be cost very very little next to nothing it's a more natural product it's not chemically induced like statins are uh, but the problem was it was kind of shh about this product because we can't make money off it and surely they can't maybe you actually go to an health shop these days and say have you got niacin they will sell you niacin which looks like that and this particular one has got 100 tablets on it and it costs a pound total of five pound forty nine pence. Uh, a hundred tablets are going to last quite a while compared to the statin drug, which costs about eight pounds ten. And in there, you get twenty eight. So that is a far more expensive drug. I went back to UCLP, so UCLP fell for me. So I went back to the doctor and just say, basically said, "Can I no, try niacin?" He went and did his research and he came back and he went, "No." And the reason why is because niacin and statin is basically the same drug. They will probably compete with each other. Uh, if potentially, in effect, would have issues, then it wouldn't work. They'll cancel each other out. Or potentially, in effect, take too much of the drug, which would make you poorly. So, 
there we go so this is a very quick video as it should be another three more down the track to say well this is what nice and dead i can't actually the trial it so but what i would like to say is if you've been to the doctors recently and you've got a blood test and they're saying your cholesterol level is around five or it's above five they try and control it with diet i would simply say have a look at nice and just go to a north shop they have it there it's cheap uh, you take one a day you can get flush niacin, which is a little bit difficult when you take it, you feel a warm sensation in various parts of your body. But you can actually get non-flush, where you just take it and you don't feel anything at all. Just let it do what it wants to do. And if you start taking niacin and go for a blood test afterwards, then let me know in the comments if that know it will do. It will avoid you going on statins. Now, I'm on statins for life. I've taken over 28 years. And I'm not in a position where I can stop. Can we do the cholesterol shoot up? Therefore, the arteries would actually flare. And that would lead to heart attack or possibly stroke. So very bad idea to, for me personally and for anybody else who's on statins to stop taking them. But if you are pre, if you are not on the statin drug, then please, please, please go and get nice and because it could actually control the cholesterol very, very quickly, and you could avoid being on astrophastatin type tablets for the rest of your life. And my last point about niacin, which is once again not disclosed by the good old doctors, is if we go onto the website. I always wind up on the website and you type in vitamin B and what you discover is that vitamin B also known as niacin is a B complex water soluble type food so even if you don't want to try the tablets the only thing what you need to do is look at vitamin B3 foods which includes niacin which is going to help your cholesterol levels naturally and that comes up with things like chicken liver tuna Turkey meat, salmon, uh, pork, we've got ground beef, you know, there's, there is quite a lot more items there. So we've got liver, chicken breast, tuna, turkey, salmon, I uh, love the smoked salmon, but try salmon, uh, anchovies, pork, which once again back in the 80s avoid meat, but pork is very good at vitamin B3, ground beef, same story. Peanuts, no, with peanuts I'd say avoid because you can take one handful and that's meant to be your limit. So I get back up once the bag's gone and I think most people are the same. Avocado, once again, I think that was a power fruit, not long back, you know, they saying take avocado. And we can get avocado in dips, so if you're having crisp at breadsticks, just get a dip with avocado in and eat that. Brown rice instead of white rice and whole wheat. Now, the old wheat is kind of going back to you know, cholesterol in general, if you have anything with fibre, the idea is that it binds LDL or the bad cholesterol. It will collect that and it will flush it out. I will be doing a video about the truth of cholesterol. we will go into all that in far more detail. I think people need to know. Uh, but for now, all wheat products is good for you. And finally, oh no, we've got a few more. So. And we also have mushrooms. So mushrooms, it's very easy to put in an homemade curry. You can have an omelette. You can do whatever else that you really, really want to do with, uh, with mushrooms. Uh, you know, they're just a really versatile vegetable. Or I know you're all now going, well, it's not vegetable, it's fungus. But, you know, there we go. Green peas, which are covered. And um, potatoes. Once again, people are saying, well, they're high in carbs. Try and stay away from potatoes. But, yeah, cholesterol issues in this country is going out worse and worse and worse. And we've already seen meat on this list. Now we've got potatoes on this list. Uh, and enriched foods. Things like breakfast cereals. What I'll be tempted to do is just have fiber-based breakfast cereal. Uh, that'll sort, sort that out. Uh, uh, even go, I mean, traditionally known, the best breakfast cereal for cholesterol issues is very simple porridge. Simple as that. But like I say, so there's a, a list of foods that we can help with that's got nice and in there naturally. If your cholesterol is above five, if your doctor's concerned and he's not about putting on statin drugs, then the second alternative is to go and get niacin from a local herb shop. Niacin, which is the byproduct of statin, and obviously you've got control over niacin, so you can stop taking it. Go for another blood test if it's risen again. Then keep taking nice in more often. You just take it once a day. Uh, you know you've got the facility to stop it when you want to. But niacin is far more potent than what uh, astrophastatin or statin drugs are. So let me know if you try niacin and it brings that reading down from over five to five or below. Ideally, it bring it down to about four point one. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, if you do this, let me know in the comments. I'll be more than interested. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you're on Facebook, then share the video. If you're on YouTube, then subscribe. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. It's a vein in my life. Uh, UCLP was disappointing. Obviously, the power plan when the book's released that encourages HDL. Uh, but also, there's an entire section in the book about cholesterol, cholesterol issues. If you have enjoyed this video.
then please provide your support by liking this video and subscribing to this YouTube channel. If you are watching on Facebook then please like and share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thank you for viewing.